Hey guys, another episode of Sled Tech, and today we got the heart of the Patriot lineup, the 850 here in the shop. All right, so to start today, we're gonna to talk about the beginning of the 850, and to really talk about the beginning of the 850 Patriot story, gotta go all the way back to 1997, the Indy XCR and, and the Red Rocket race sled. That was the first uh, Polaris designed and Polaris built uh, 440 engine that we had built, and it was the beginning of our Liberty engine line. We call Liberty is the name of the engine family, and it had a couple different variations o over the many years, but the 440 was what we call the small block architecture. It was a smaller block, smaller cylinder pitch, and it started as that 440 race motor. It had a ton of updates over the years, of course, VES, SDI, all, all of these big upgrades, but the core architecture stayed the same all the way through the 800 HO, the 800 clean fire engine uh, that we ran in the Axis chassis, uh, both on the RMKs and then the, the Indian switchback as well. When we wanted to build the next motor uh, in about 2014, uh, we started with that 800 clean fire and we actually built a stroker version of it, so a longer stroke but the same bore in that 800 with the goals of more performance, more durability uh, and continuing to push engine technology. We did some testing and development that, with that for the winter and it became pretty clear that we had reached uh, the limits in a couple different ways of that architecture. We needed to start new. Uh, the team spent the whole winter kind of working on a bunch of different options and we landed on a brand new engine design from the very top to the very bottom, a completely new architecture using everything we learned over the last 20 years of designing and manufacturing our own, own engines, uh, but bringing them into the next, uh, next generation of, of motors. Here at Polaris, one of the core tenets of our engine and vehicle design is inertia, low inertia. When you make the inertia of a snowmobile and the engine that's in it lower, everything gets better. It's easier to ride, easier to handle. If we remember our middle school science class, Newton's first law of motion, right? An object at rest wants to stay at rest. It takes more work to get it going, uh, to, to get it not resting. That is very much the, at play in an engine. Right? The, the engine is rotating at idle, it's not resting, but it's moving rather slowly. And when you give it full jam and want to get to 8200 RPM, it's a lot that it has to spool up and it has to overcome a lot of inertia to get going. Anytime you can take inertia out of the engine, make it rev up faster, make power quicker, the engine's going to put that power to the snow faster. In a snowmobile, we make our snowmobiles as light as possible because then they're lower inertia. When you have a low inertia chassis and a low inertia engine, you combine the two and it's way easier to handle, especially on a mountain sled, but on a trail sled, when you're going through bumps or through a corner. On a snowmobile, you use the throttle to steer the vehicle all the time, whether you feel it or not. And so when you can get the engine to rev up and put that power down to the track and into the snow faster through lower inertia, the vehicle becomes easier to handle. It responds quicker, you need less effort, it's more predictable, and it all gets better. When we look at the transition from the 800 HO, the clean fire engine, to 850 in this new platform, inertia was one of the hallmarks. The engine has 13% less inertia than the 800 HO did, and that was already a really low inertia engine, building that response and quick power to the snow. The biggest way that we did that is through the crank train, right? That's what's spinning. The crank is uh, a little bit lighter than it was on the um, 800 HO, even though we moved the cylinders out. So one of the challenges with the 800 HO, we wanted more power. Uh, we knew that we were gonna go bigger bore at some point. Um, and so we actually moved the cylinder pitch or the distance between the center lines of the cylinders out by five millimeters, giving us room for bigger bore, uh, more cooling capacity, and then 900 eventually in the future. Even though the crank got a little bit wider, which is typically challenge for inertia, right? Um, inertia want, or low inertia wants to be close to the, the center of the mass. We're able to take weight out of the crank, put it in strategic places, and deliver a lower inertia engine that makes 10% more power than the 800 Clean Fire did. When we were developing the 850, we had a lot of things with the 800 HO that we really liked. It was a great engine, it performed really well, the low inertia crank train like we talked about. There are a lot of things that we wanted to make a big improvement on for performance. We had a chance to do an entirely new engine top to bottom. Wanted to make sure that we, we turned over every stone to make sure it had the performance that we needed in its 850 form and then for the mod versions down the road. Kind of walk around some, some of those big performance upgrades. So first one, like we touched on, uh, it's got a five millimeter wider pitch. What that means is cylinders are five millimeters wider apart. 
more, that allows for more flow in between the cylinders, more flow in the ports, that's more power. If you're gonna make more power, you need more airflow. It's as simple as that. Uh, the bore is actually still an 85 millimeter bore like it was on the 800 HO. The stroke is just four millimeters deeper. Um, we've made a lot of different variations of bore and stroke combinations and there's uh, trade-offs to be made everywhere. But the 85 millimeter bore with the 74 millimeter stroke was really the optimum mix of performance and durability as well as response, mid-range power, right? We wanted more power in the mid-range than the 800 had. And so that's what we put here on the 850. It's got a three-stage VES system, very similar to what we've, we've been running in the past uh, with some cool upgrades. But the exhaust valve is allowed to be tighter to the cylinder. You look how tight that, that seal is there. And that makes more power. Uh, the design allows for more variation between the different stages, so we're allowed to do more with the exhaust valves, which is a really big part to making a lot of power. When we swing around to the intake side, uh, upgraded to a 50 millimeter throttle body, so again, more power means more air, so a 50 millimeter throttle body with a largely similar SDI or semi-direct injection uh, system that we've been running on the 800 HO. When you put all of that together, it's a really strong platform that performs really well. We, we demanded the next level of performance out of this engine, uh, and it delivered. Like I said, 10% more power, way more power in the mid-range, more responsive, lower inertia. Really everything we and our riders were looking for from the performance standpoint was met with 850. We talked a lot about the 850 performance, and that was absolutely one of the two big goals when we did the, the new Patriot platform. But the other was durability. Like I said, we got a chance to do a whole top to bottom brand new engine from scratch. Had to take all the durability lessons we had over the last 20 years of building engines and put them into Patriot. So really starts at the, the crank train, right? It starts at the bottom of the rotating assembly of the engine. Stronger crankshaft, better crankshaft assembly process. So how it's put together, making it stronger and more durable. Big PTO bearings supporting the additional power uh, that we wanted to make with 850 and then going up. Moving up the engine from the crank, we get to the piston. So 850 is still an over-square engine, 85 by 74. And what an over-square engine does is it, it manages the trade-off of piston speed uh, with durability. So the longer the stroke gets, especially for an engine that lives a lot of its life at, at high RPM, like a snowmobile engine does, the longer the stroke gets, the higher the piston speed gets, right? The piston's gotta travel up and down further in the same amount of revolutions, that means it's going faster. That really is tough on durability, like I said, especially for an engine like a snowmobile engine that lives a lot of its life at high RPM. The 85 by 74 configuration is really the optimum mix of durability, uh, both on the piston speed side and then the, the piston itself, along with performance. A little bit longer stroke than the 800, uh, more, more snap out of the hole, more wind range power. When we look at the piston itself, a lot of big upgrades for the Patriot platform. So an eight millimeter taller compression height, single ring piston design that has a ton of development and validation in it uh, when we were doing the Patriot platform. And then bigger wrist pins and some other upgrades uh, in the way the piston's put together and assembled. Really focused on durability while keeping it light, right? Pistons are part of that inertia of the engine like we talked about and we wanna make sure that we keep them light and strong. All right, we move up to the head and it's a one piece head design so it's stronger and then has more cooling capacity. So keeping the engine at the, at the proper temperature. Snowmobile engines live a really hard life uh, from managing their temperatures, the cooling system, the t conditions that they're in and then the power levels they're making at the RPM they are. So keeping it cool uh, is a really important piece. Coming around to the, the other side of the engine here, look at the mag side. Lighter flywheel, uh, so keeping the low inertia of the engine out, and then uh, bigger stator, uh, more stator power while not adding a ton of weight. Uh, with the Patriot platform, when you're adding things like 7S display, things that, that need some power, so more stator output without sacrificing the weight was key. When we look at the intake side of the engine, a couple of last durability pieces to touch on. The 50 millimeter throttle body like we talked about, and then uh, V-Force read, so a really high quality engine read there, uh, sticking with V-Force that we had on the, the clean fire uh, with more durability in the injection system as well. When we started the Patriot platform program and engineering back in 2014 and then launched it in 2019, it wasn't just 850 written on the whiteboard. The intention was always to build a really strong, solid platform right away and then build our engine variants from it with using what works really well. 650, 850, 9R, and Boost all share this Patriot architecture in a lot of ways. They all share that 74 millimeter stroke, 
different bore spacing and, and the bigger 900 bore is enabled by that, by that new cylinder architecture we talked about. Its engine's ready for boost. The boost application gets an extra set of injectors, a different set of pistons and a big turbocharger. That's it, it was built for boost. The 650 version is a smaller bore version of this 850. That's a super awesome trail cruiser engine and a big upgrade for that class. So really a holistic platform approach to how we wanted to build engines, giving all of our customers and all of our sleds the best engine for them with the Patriot platform. When we look at 850 in our lineup today with 650, 9R, Boost, the 850 is the do it all. It's the rock solid foundation. It runs awesome in any snowmobile, trail sled, mountain sled. It's easy to ride, it's easy to handle, it's durable. You can get it in season at your dealership right now and it's an awesome engine to ride all winter long. That's it for today on the, uh, the core of the Patriot platform, the 850. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions or what you wanna see next, throw them in the comments and we'll see you next time.